Hello, it's Bob Nelms. Thanks for taking the time to view this short vlog. Last week I talked about the need for two trains, a fast train and a slow train, in response to things that go wrong. This week I'd like to dwell on some key aspects of being on that slow train by talking about a very meaningful word. And that word is manifestation. I've been paying attention to this word for quite a while now and I've learned that a lot of people relate this word to things like rashes and cold sores and fevers and other bodily ills. And this is a good way to start thinking about that word. I mean, after all, a rash is a manifestation of an underlying but unseen problem, as is a cold sore, fevers, and other bodily ills. Another way of saying this, though, is that a rash is evidence of an underlying but unseen problem, right? A cold sore, therefore, is also evidence of an underlying but unseen problem. A fever is also evidence of an underlying but unseen problem. Therefore, those two words are equal in meaning. A manifestation is the same thing as evidence. Evidence of something going on that we cannot see because it's hidden. Now I'm going to start suggesting some very practical things in a minute, but before I do, I think it would be meaningful to consider something else. And that is that everything we see is a manifestation, isn't it? A mountain is a manifestation of something going on that we cannot see because it's hidden. In other words, there's a whole story behind how these mountains came to be the way they are right now. There's a whole story behind how those clouds came to be floating at the crest of those mountains right now as well. Naturalists, philosophers, and religious and spiritual pursuers immerse themselves in the manifestation of a mountain, for example, in an attempt to understand the hidden story behind its meaning. If we realize and I mean truly realize that all of life is a manifestation or evidence of something going on that we cannot see because it's hidden, wouldn't we be more interested in slowing down and immersing ourselves in these manifestations of life? Therefore, knowing that everything we see as a manifestation is critically important especially when things go wrong. Again, there's a whole story behind whatever went wrong, and it ought to be our job to immerse ourselves in that manifestation, whatever that manifestation might be, to help us understand the whole hidden story. So let's get a, a bit more practical about how, how to immerse ourselves in that manifestation, or how to immerse ourselves in the evidence. Well, we can immerse ourselves in the ev evidence of anything that goes wrong by acknowledging the three major forms of evidence. First, as human beings, we sense things. We are like human sponges that absorb what we see and hear and taste and feel. When something goes wrong, therefore, it is vitally important to understand what people absorbed through their senses. We want to know what they absorbed at the time of the event, that's for sure. But we also want to know what they absorbed in the seconds and minutes and days, and even hours and weeks and months, and maybe even years prior to the event. The way it ended up looking, or the manifestation itself, also tells us things. That's why it's so important not to touch anything after something has gone wrong until people freeze the way it ended up looking. We'll end up wondering how it came to look the way it looks. 
and our records tell us things. These days we record just about everything. We monitor pressures and temperatures and velocities. We keep training records. We document our procedures. We make all kinds of information available on the, available on the internet. All of these things are also considered part of the vital evidence to gather. And an easy way to remember this is to remember the three P's. People evidence, physical evidence, paper evidence. People, physical, paper. People, physical, paper. If your car breaks down, you ought to ask, who should I talk to? What physical evidence should I look at? What paper evidence should I look at? If a Challenger space shuttle explodes in the sky, same thing. Who should I talk to? What physical evidence should I look at? What paper evidence should I look at? If you're having problems in your civic group, same thing. <laughs> Marriage problems, same thing. Why not start looking for the three P's? People, physical, paper. People, physical, paper. Every time something goes wrong in your life, I'm telling you, the three P's will provide the basis for all true and profound learning. Next week, I'll talk even more about the three P's. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. See you next time.